For the past few days, I've been in Normandy, France. And from Sword Beach all the way to Utah, there are literally thousands of stories that could be told uh, about what happened here in, in June of 1944. Some of those stories uh, have been you know, adapted into movie form, things like Saving Private Ryan, Band of Brothers, uh, The Longest Day. But if there was ever an action here at Normandy that deserved the cinematic treatment, it's what happened with the 82nd Airborne right here at Lafayette Bridge. When you come to Lafayette, well, this is really a good place to start. This is a statue that is known as Iron Mike. Iron Mike is kind of like the, the patron saint of the airborne paratroopers, uh, named after a, a guy who fought in Sicily in Operation Husky, who was just tough as nails. But here on this side of the monument, you can see they have a tribute to then Brigadier General James Gavin, uh, who here, uh, it says, forever embodied himself as the heart and soul of the 82nd Airborne. Uh, so between the dates of June 6th and, and June 9th, man, there is some tough fighting that takes place here at Lafayette. And we brought something with us today that is connected to one of the men who fought here. Uh, but first, uh, it would probably be a good idea to get a little bit of a refresher on what happened here on June 6th. On D-Day, the 101st and 82nd Airborne Divisions were tasked with securing the western flank of the invasion. One of the key objectives for the 82nd was a bridge over the Mer de Ray River at Lafayette. A mixed group of 82nd Airborne regiments under the direct command of James Gavin staged up at the bridge to prevent any of the Germans from retaking St. Maraglise and also from threatening the troops who were landing at Utah Beach. To hinder the paratroopers, the fields around Lafayette were flooded, which also confined all troop movements on both sides to a narrow causeway. Defending this causeway and the access to the east was a force of around 550 American paratroopers. Flanking the bridge itself were two bazooka teams. Marcus Heim and Little Peterson were to take up positions to the south of the bridge, while John Boulderson and Gordon Prine set up to the north. At around 4 p.m., a Panzer Mark III along with German infantry appeared along the causeway. When they reached a bend in the road, a machine gunner to the left of Hyman Peterson opened fire and killed the tank commander who was standing in the turret. As the tank continued to roll forward, well, it was engaged by the bazooka teams and by a 57mm gun that was up on the hill to the east uh, right alongside the road. The tank was knocked off of its tracks, but the guns still remained operational. At some point during the fighting, a paratrooper from C Company of the 505th named Joe Fitt rushed across the bridge under fire and dropped a grenade down the hatch to silence these guns. This put the first tank out of action, but two French Renaults operated by German tankers were right behind it. Hyman Peterson took up a position by the Mark III and from there take out the second tank. At this point, Heim and Peterson are running low on ammo, so Heim made a daring run across the road to where the other bazooka team had been. Boulderson and Pine are gone, but a damaged bazooka and their ammo remain. Heim gathers up the ammunition and miraculously makes it back to Peterson. From here, they and the 57mm gun engage the third tank, taking it out and eventually securing the bridge from the German thrust on D-Day. All four men from the bazooka teams would be awarded the Distinguished Service Cross for their actions on June 6 at Lafayette Bridge.
In addition to Iron Mike, they also have this monument up here at Lafayette, and this might be one of my favorite monuments in all of Normandy. Just the detail and the craftsmanship that went into this, uh, to me, is is unparalleled. Uh, so here you can see the, the manor house uh, at Lafayette. Here's Lafayette Bridge, and then they're depicting the bazooka team down there in their foxhole, and then the German armor uh, coming down the road to take the bridge and uh, again there's just so much going on they have these different maps uh, they depict the paratroopers landing on the the night of D-Day uh, and then also you get like large-scale representation showing the peninsula and uh, where the the gliders are coming in um, there, there's just so much here. Uh, even this like little shroud thing is supposed to represent a parachute and they even have like some parachute rigging down here on the bottom. Just really, really a work of art. We've made our way back down to Lafayette Bridge and I just wanted to uh, take a few moments to come down here and, and show a little bit of what we've been talking about. So here, uh, of course, you can see a sign for the Merdere River. And if we kind of just walk out here, uh, well, here off to the right, here is where the uh, bazooka team uh, to the north of the bridge was situated. This was Boulderson and Prine. And if we make our way across the road here, well, looking out, you know, in these fields, uh, of course, as I've already mentioned, the all of these fields would have been flooded. And right down here is where Heim and Peterson were situated. Now, you can't see the, the foxhole now. It's long since been covered up. And uh, here at Lafayette Manor, you can actually stay here. Uh, but anyway, uh, on June 6th, there you can see in the distance the, the curve in the road where the three tanks were, were coming around. And uh, about mm, roughly 20 yards from the other side of this bridge is where that, that first Panzer Mark III was taken out. Pretty amazing. the dog tags of Joseph Fitt from C Company, 505th Parachute Infantry Regiment, 82nd Airborne, and we're standing at the Iron Mike statue right near the Lafayette Bridge. And Joseph Fitt um, participated in the Battle of Lafayette, and he did one of the most amazing acts of bravery that most people probably don't know about unless you're a real student of the Battle of Normandy. So during this battle, uh, some German tanks appeared and one of them got knocked out, and, but, the, but its gun was still functional. And so it was still uh, doing damage. So Fit ran across the bridge out in the open, jumped up on top of that tank and opened its hatch and threw a grenade in there, killing the crew. And um, talk about bravery. I mean, to, can you imagine approaching a tank and running across the bridge at Lafayette and throwing a grenade in there? I mean, um, it's, it's, it's just amazing to think of some of these um, 
acts of bravery that happened in this place. But um, I'm really happy to bring out his dog tags today. Um, it's, it's, it's an honor to do so. Um, Joseph Fitt received the Silver Star for his, uh, his action here at Lafayette, but he didn't live to see it. Um, he, not too long after that, he was tragically killed by a, a German sniper. Um, we have the dog tags at the Gettysburg Museum of History, but I want to show you another uh, artifact here in Normandy that's at the Airborne Museum where they actually have his jump jacket. We've moved into St. Mary Glees and that we're currently standing in the town square and all throughout St. Mary Glees they have these different banners and such that honor the men who fought here in this area and uh, right here close to the church well here is a banner for Joseph Fitt. All right, we just uh, rolled in here into the Airborne Museum in St. Mary Glees, and we're, we're gonna come back here one day and, and take a look at everything here, because there is a lot to see. Uh, but there's one thing in particular here that we wanna take a look at. I'm at the Airborne Museum in St. Mary Glees, and I wanted to come in here today because they, they also have a Joe Fit item, which is this reinforced jump jacket that he wore at D-Day. This, this is reinforced with the extra material here on the sleeves and along the pocket. It has this 82nd Airborne patch right here. And interestingly, it has some blood stains here. Joe Fit, of course, was killed um, during the Battle of Normandy. Um, a lot of his items were sent home and uh, I believe this is the first time the dog tags have been reunited with the jacket since 1944. But it really, uh, I really wanted to bring these back here today because I knew they had his jacket. We've moved back out to the Lafayette Bridge, and there's one thing about this place that we left out. Uh, in French, Lafayette means the proud, and uh, the, the men who, who fought here uh, certainly had much to be proud of. But that was just a little bit on Joe Fitt of the 82nd Airborne, and uh, one of the many acts of heroism that were performed right here in the Battle of Normandy.